Baby, I don't need you. <laughs> Welcome to Karaoke Hour with the fucking Do It Cast. <laughs> <laughs> that's right kids we're just a few days into quarantine and we have absolutely gone round the bend <laughs> coming to you live on tape 33 minutes past the hour 27 minutes to the top of the hour driving and weather together jamie noguchi on the ones and twos good <laughs> sir how Did are we doing back? this morning <laughs> oh my god um have you joined in any, have you set up any like Zoom meetings or like check-ins with no, any of your no. friends? No, uh, <laughs> my, my girlfriend's done a couple with like her friends or whatever it is. And I'm, I'm jokingly putting together, they're big trivia nerds. So I was jokingly talking about putting together and hosting a trivia game for them. Oh, Just, nice. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm trying to put that together. I'm hopefully we'll be able to do that on Friday. I'll, we'll, we'll turn the camera on me and I'll literally just start hosting a trivia thing. <laughs> I might like set up a whiteboard in the whole night and actually do it right. Like break out the colored blazer. And- <laughs> <laughs> All right. We have team. This might be doom. how I make money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I may end up being some sort of YouTube sensation before this is over. Either that or it'll be an echo chamber of one, which is way more likely. I think, uh, I think doesn't Dan, don't Dan and Aaron do trivia on the regular? Like, um, Dan yes. Malhom and Aaron yeah. Lowey. Super art fight. Yes. Yeah. Your own Red Aaron and the Charm City Shinobi both are big, uh, big trivia buffs. And uh, I'm sure that they would absolutely crush me, which is why I should host. Um, yes. You always send the more entertaining, dumber guy to host. <laughs> That's the idea. Just <laughs> Welcome to Man with Beard Trivia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm a man, this is a beard, and this is some trivia. Let's get into it. <laughs> Punch beard, Brandon Chalmers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my oh, God. Oh, man. Ha- so, you're, you're still, your job still re- requires you to, to nope. be on site. No. Oh, no. We're, oh, we're okay. out of work. Oh, dang. No, all the job sites are shut down, so there's nothing. Oh, shit. Yeah, like it... The the place I work for does more commercial level stuff. So like if you were running a small electrician's business and you needed to do repairs in people's homes or emergency service or something like that, yeah, absolutely. Those those people are still working. And there are a couple of our guys who are still out there working at the moment, but there ain't enough work to pay me. So oh, right now I'm fuck. I'm home. Yep. Yeah. So file for unemployment and just kind of waiting it out. So, yeah, man. I, I know I'm not the only one, though. I, I am doing everything I can to maintain a calm attitude about all this stuff. I am very lucky in the sense that my job is still going to be there when all this is over. And yeah. I'm trying to be as appreciative as I can about that. And I know there are a lot of people, probably some people who are listening to this, who aren't going to be as lucky as I am about that. Yeah. Um, I, if there's anything I can do to help you guys out, obviously not financially because everybody's kind of real tight right now, but yeah. moral support, letters of recommendation, what have you, um, keep your chins up. We're all going to get through this thing together. Everybody's going through this thing together. So yeah, that's pretty, all we can really do is kind of maintain as much of a positive attitude as we can. And if you go out into the world, be as kind as you can to the other people that you see. I know we, we badger on about this all the time, but now especially a um, little bit of kindness goes a long way. Man, so, fuck, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, it's, I mean, like I said, it, it is what it is. Like, I, <laughs> you know, I, I figure on the plus side, if I have a positive attitude about this and, you know, when I was, when I was talking to my boss and he was like, I, I feel awful about this. I was like, it's not you. If the job sites are shut down and there's no work, you guys can't pay me for not doing anything. I mean, yeah, I, I'm sure there are some people who are like, the company can handle it. yeah, I'm, I'm sure they could technically go in the hole, but they have a large amount of people who they're still paying health insurance for everyone. Yeah. They're covering that. Yeah. They're that's, paying, that's tremendous. That's tremendous, right? And the idea is they're covering health insurance while this is happening and the idea that once we're back to normal, everything will even itself out on the end, but they're making sure that if you need to go to a healthcare provider, that that's covered. That's rad of them. That's really Like whether nice. you're physically being paid or not. So, yeah. right. So that's, you know, I, I'm choosing to try and have a positive attitude about it. And when I talked to my boss about it, he was like, 
I I think it shows a lot of character trying to be really positive through all this thing. And uh, <laughs> if there's ever a trial by fire of whether or not you want this thing and whether or not you're a team player, this is it. It's like, yeah. I got you, boss. For so sure. I'm basically just going to, uh, you know, I'm going to hang tight. And when the work is there, they're going to bring me in. But until the work's there, I'm stuck. So Man. I'm debating what I'm going to do. I'm, you know, obviously I'm, I'm applying for jobs like anybody else um, because I'm, I file for unemployment. So I'm going to start applying at things that I think I could actually get hired for. In the meantime, I'm going to probably apply at places like Walmart and Target and what have you and just try and get some income coming in. I, I want to work. Um, yeah. Fuck, dude. I don't, you know. Yeah, I know. I like... I, I hear that in your voice and I agree with you. And I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who are being really stressed about that. Um, I don't want to be one of those guys. Mm. So I'm going to try and maintain a stiff upper lip and, you know, say that, am I concerned about things? Yeah, absolutely. Like anybody else says, but I'm going to try and stay as positive as I can and uh, remind everybody that a little escapism is important and to just kind of be strong through this whole thing and don't take it out on each other. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's too bad neither one of us is a celebrity, so this could be a celebrity podcast. And we could be like, yeah, I know. <laughs> but in the meantime, for the hopefully dozen or dozens, huh? Huh? <laughs> Wink. Um, who end up seeing this, maybe we can find a little, little bit of an escape. Jamie motherfucking Noguchi. Hmm. What are oh, you thinking on, bro? I, for, I forgot to do the intro. Oh yeah, do, shit. Yeah, yeah, we need Wait. to do the proper intro. Cut Whoa. it. Okay, hang on a second, because I need to meet a couple. That's on me. Boss, okay, I'm sorry. okay. <laughs> that's that's on me. That's not on Jamie. I I I, I jump started right out of the gate. I'm like, want to see my buddy? Want to hang out with my buddy? That's on me. I'm sorry. So <laughs> our Jamie and Gucci, are let's blending pay them into everything. <laughs> let's pay them bills. Pay them. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the fucking do it podcast brought to you by the hard knock media podcast network. That's N O C nerds of color. If you're seeing this on Facebook or on YouTube, you see the URLs. If you're hearing this on iTunes or Podbean, you get to see the URL in the, in the pod description, in the episode description, visit us, check out all of the other podcasts if you want hard hitting cultural opinions and then come to us when you just want to hear two fucking idiots ramble on yep. about cool shit 100 percent. just it, it's like the sesame street of bad ideas is really what we are brought to you by the letters n o n c <laughs> thankfully here because of viewers like you Du, 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 du. Uh, yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Especially now, uh, go to the Hard Knock Media website, download all of those po all of those podcasts, put them in yes. your in your iTunes, whatever, or however you listen to them, and just put them on while you're working the wa the hours away, or or trying to work the hours away while your kids are running around at the house. <laughs> Cause all the schools are closed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, just as a reminder, I I'm sure I probably already dropped an F bomb, but, uh, we're not safe for work, even work from home. So just, I'm, yeah. Oh yeah. Just a reminder. Headphones <laughs> or, or teach your kids about Headphones. the proper use of swear words. Cause it's, it's yeah. very important. <laughs> it's just days. a crash course in, in cursing is really what we are. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, uh, you had asked me a question before we went to the introduction. Uh, what am I geeking yeah, on? So yeah. I, I don't know anything about this company. It's called Pluto TV. Um, okay. They, they, stream, they stream television channels for free. Uh, so like if you download it onto your iPad or your Roku, or you can actually go to Pluto.tv on your web, web browser. And if you've got the internet, you can stream TV. They got movie channels, they got musical channels, uh, they play commercials. So it's, it's like, it's like, I, yeah, I, they got to get paid. 
Yeah, they got to get paid, but I don't know where they come from. So like, I don't know if this is like a, um, a bunch of media conglomerates or whatever. I don't give a shit because they have a tokusatsu channel that streams Ooh. old school Common Rider and old school Super Sentai shows and old school Ultraman. Hell yeah. 24 seven. If you go to Pluto, d- Pluto.tv and go to channel 681, it's called Toku Shoutsu, I think. Um, but, but that seems like your bread and butter. Tokusatsu yeah. and shouting. Yeah. <laughs> Toku Shoutsu. Um, the, the host of the channel. If, did you ever watch Power Rangers? Yeah, of course. Like the original show. So the guy who yeah. plays Skull um, is like the god yeah. him to host. So he has a, a show where he explains okay. what the hell you're watching. <laughs> okay. Um, but man, they have the original Common Rider. I have not seen ori- all of the original Common Rider. So like, if you're looking for karate bug men punching other bug men in shitty suits, turn this shit on. It's it's amazing. Yeah. It's fantastic, and it's hard to nice. believe that the show is for kids because like the original common writer is dark as fuck. Like people yeah. die on the regular. There's blood splatters everywhere. Like bodies are disintegrating into foam and shit. It's, Hell yeah. I mean, it's yeah. dark and I love yeah, I'm it here for that. Um, and they also rebroadcast like, um, so the original power Rangers show was taken from Jew Ranger so they have the original Jew Ranger on there. So they play like okay. some of the original Japanese stuff. It's all subtitled. Um, but man, this happened at the exact right time. Like nice. the, ch- the channel yeah, dropped and then quarantine. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come here. Come here. Come on. All Brandon. Oh. Brandon. So yeah, for those of you who have the video version, um, I decided last week, uh, along with my loving girlfriend, that we were going to oh. go get a dog. Puppy. So we stopped by the Harford County Animal Shelter uh, in Harford County, Maryland. Uh, I have a friend of mine who works there as a vet tech. Oop. As he clicks every key on the keyboard. Let me uh, back that up. Um, what a cutie. Come here. Yes, so... This is Seuss, um, S-O-O-S, named after a character in Gravity Falls. The big old pit mix is like 65 pounds. Um, so for anyone uh, who knew my last dog, about 20 or so pounds heavier at the moment and probably going to put a few more on. Wow. Yeah. Um, that dent in the so wall is going to be paws. huge. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, the dent in the wall is going to be very huge. Um, but yeah, he's a big old sweet boy. Um, so that's been a way for uh, Nicole and I to kind of hang out and deal with all of this stuff going on. Cause it's now routine. We have to get up and take the dog out. Yes. We have to go take care of him. Yeah. So it's been a nice thing in, in training and training and what have you. So Aww. it's, uh, it's been very, very good to have. What so a it's, sweet it's nice having a dog back in my world. Aww. Yes. Yeah. And big old sweetheart and loves people and has just been a really, uh, a really nice addition to the fam. So that's, that's really, really cool. Really. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So uh, if you get a chance to see us in person or anything else like that, I'll start once all this stuff's over, I'm going to start doing hiking uh, days and everything else like that. Uh, we'll, we can start throwing them up on social medias and just yeah. be like, Hey, come hang out, bring dogs. Yeah. It'll be good. Well, I think, I mean, I, th- I think you're still able to go places as long as no one's around. So yeah, I don't the, know how you do is, that. <laughs> and that's the thing is a lot of trails around here are all like single or double trails where basically oh, like there's enough room for you to barely get by. Yeah, yeah. That's not social distancing properly. So no. unless I went up to like big horse trails or something like that, where I have that ability, but with as much rain as it's been recently, it's really not a good time to go hiking anyway, unless you're willing to just get kind of nasty doing it. Yeah. Um, so for the time being, we're, we're stuck. You kind of walk in the sidewalks in the neighborhood and what have you. Um, but mm. it'll be good soon. But just a reminder to everyone else um, that, you know, the dog has reminded me, really given me a very serious uh, thought process about it. And I see this as I walk around my neighborhood and there's a local elementary school and stuff like that near my house. Um, don't use big um, playgrounds. Um, common yeah. use areas, things like that. Yeah. Um, that's not okay. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know what makes you think that that's okay. 
Uh, like, <laughs> I know there's a lot the of equipment. local parks and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, like I know there's a lot of local mm. parks and stuff like that that have closed up shop. Um, and people are just parking on the road and just walking in and then just using the stuff anyway because they're, they're home and they're like, we had to get the kids out of the house. Genuinely. Like, when I, when I take Seuss out, it's a walk. I touch his leash. I touch his poop bags. I make sure to clean up after him. But other than that, I'm not touching anything else. Yeah. So just as a reminder to everybody, now is the time that if you're going to take your dog out, whatever it is, you're going to go out for a walk. When you pass by somebody, maintain that six foot barrier and make sure that you don't touch anything. You don't have to like be smart about this sort of thing. You should be able to enjoy, you know, the outdoors and get out and get some fresh air. Jesus Christ. Do we all need it? But Oh, for sure. You got to be smart about this sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So just a little uh, helpful reminder for those of you who, uh, Jesus, know someone, because I guarantee if you have kids, you're probably already aware of this. But if you know somebody who has kids who's like, I don't know, um, thick um, <laughs> when it comes to this stuff, and I'm trying to think of the best way to say that, <laughs> remind them yeah. that, you know, stuff, stuff lives on surfaces for a little bit, just a, just a couple of few. Yeah. You guys I mean, saw the thing. It was like 72 hours on most uh, like plastic surfaces and stuff like that, which is what most playgrounds are. Yeah. And uh, kids tend to touch and lick fucking everything. They will, yeah. So, they will touch everything. It's, it's, it's tough, especially if your kid has a lot of energy. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I know <laughs> you have one of those. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's been, it's been interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. So, well, I'm, but yeah, I'm happy. so he's, he's been great. I'm, I'm happy for you. Cause I know, uh, the previous administration, uh, absconded with your buddy. Uh, in, in all, in all fairness to that, in case it ends up getting back to the previous administration, I voluntarily, uh, let Molly head out the door and because I thought that they needed some more support there. And I know that Molly's under incredibly great care by them and I've seen photos and I know pups in good shape and I thank them for taking good care of one of my closest buddies. Um, so it's very, very much appreciated. So no big deal there. Um, but yeah, it was time to, to get a buddy and I've been kicking it around for a bit. We were going to wait until, uh, you know, living situations kind of changed a little bit. And it was like, you know what? Fuck it. Yeah. I, I had that same thought process I did when yeah, I got yeah, my yeah. in the first place. It was just like, you're an adult. If you want a dog, just go get a fucking dog. And it was like, yeah, eh, fuck it. It's fine. <clears throat> also, there's no good time. Like, no, it's, it's like having a kid. <clears throat> like it's, it, I, there's no good time. The, yeah. the, the idea that you're worried about having like making sure that things are, are, are in a row, it's a pretty good place where you should be starting. Like if you're concerned about it, cool. Okay. Right. Like that's, that's a good thing. Yeah. The, the latest, yeah, but, the latest season of uh, ugly delicious is all about him figuring out how to do the restaurant thing with a kid. And, and like, we, yeah, we just watched the first episode and that was the, the big takeaway is that like, there's no good time. There's no perfect time. Yeah. You just have to yeah. have the kid. Like if you want the kid, yeah. have the kid and then figure it out. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Everything else is going to have to get figured out as you go. So you, if you want the things you want, you'll figure it out and you'll make the sacrifices you have to make. What's, yeah. what's the greater goal here? What do you really want? A buddy that'll lick your face. Yes. And I, I needed a fuzzy buddy who is, dude, a total goddamn cuddle buddy. Like, Aww. yes, absolute like i'm there are quite a few photos i think sitting on nicole's phone of just he and i zonked out sleeping <laughs> on the couch just 100 percent both of us and uh, i know she caught a video of us the other night in bed snoring both of us <laughs> like one of us snoring then the other snoring and i swear the dog's louder than i am <laughs> yeah it's just literally like <laughs> that's like, so Jesus cool Christ. that's yes. adorable <laughs> fuck man yeah, we, we have definitely immediately bonded. It, it was really great, too, because like we went over there. The staff over there is super great, by the way, and I thank them a ton. Um, but like we went over there to meet a dog. Um, that dog actually got adopted like two hours before we were going to head over there. Um, so we were, you know, we were a little upset about it. It was like, okay, hey, we'll, we'll still go up there. We'll go see if there's any other dog up there yeah. that, you know, that we can find. We go up there. They give us a list of pups. They let you walk around and kind of get to know the dogs without anyone else kind of guiding you through or anything else like that. And 
we we picked two to meet. Um, neither one of them were Seuss. We met both dogs, and it, we had good interactions, but it wasn't like clicking one of those things. And I was yeah, like, we were yeah. getting ready to leave, and I asked the the staff. I was like, hey, is there another pup that I should really meet? And this poor buddy was when we walked by the crate, wouldn't even lift his head up. He's oh no! Up a little ball, just hiding in his little bed. Just mm. didn't want to have anything to do with it. Other dogs going bananas and just want to know part of it. They brought him out. Totally different dog in the room. Aww. Like immediately, like both Nicole and I were sitting on the floor, and immediately walked over, just walked right into Nicole's lap. Immediately, just fell down right in her lap and just started wanting cuddles. <laughs> and then got up and did the same thing to me. Yeah. And we we clicked. And it was, I swear, if it was a minute, I'd be shocked. Like. <laughs> We, we played with him for a little bit, but we were both smitten in, you know, love at first sight sort of thing. And I looked at her and she was like, yeah. I was like, all right, let's do it. They looked at me like, wait, wait, what does that mean? I was like, <laughs> I'm, I'm he's coming home with dog. us. So yeah. just, yeah, like, what do you finish mean? Up what the does paperwork. that mean? Yeah. Let's do this thing. Yeah. <laughs> Who the so fuck do you think I am? <laughs> uh, yeah. So also, um, he was part of a program called Kennel to Couch. Um, so he had actually been in the shelter since July. Oh, shit. Um, so he'd actually been there quite some time and been yeah. overlooked quite a bit. And he was actually their featured dog and had a little bulletin board with all of his photos on it. And Aww. he was one of the staff's favorite. Yeah. So we ended up getting this really nice care package from them. Um, uh, you know, uh, balls and bowls and, and all sorts of things like that. And basically like a support system that like, Hey, we really appreciate you grabbing this, this pit and, and bringing them home and making sure that, you know, he's got a good home. So uh, it's a, uh, it's a really cool program. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So it was a uh, little, little bit of kismet was, uh, it was nice. So with all of this, this roughness going around, being able to know that like, yeah, cool. Got my new buddy. Sweet. Things are, things are pretty good. Yeah. So, Aww. you know, but uh, figuring it out. Little beam so, of sunshine in this bullshit. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's, it's been very nice to kind of all this stuff's going on. And then knowing that n the second you sit down, he immediately <laughs> like leaning up against you like, hey, how's it going? What's going on? Do you know I love you? <laughs> it's like, yes, you're very, very sweet. <laughs> We should we should schedule doggy streams, so yes. Hazel could so Hazel could meet your doggy virtually. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll have to do like in person all sorts of stuff when all this is over and and do a Seuss World Tour. We're just gonna bring them around. That's okay, good, adorable. Yes, adorable. Yeah. So adorable. So what's going on, man? Let's let's give each other uh, what's what's a bit of levity. What's going on? All right. So, uh, before all this happened, we went yeah. on an away mission and whenever we go on an away mission, we always talk about it. And it's been a while since okay. we've, we've gone on the away mission, but you had okay. a birthday in March. I, I did have a birth. Wow. I totally forgot about this. Yeah. I forgot about my own birthday. That's what's going on. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> but you had a birthday. <laughs> yeah, I did. And yep. so, and, yeah, go for it. God. Go for it. I, I was going to say, so every year, um, when, time permits and capability permits and what have you. What I like to do for my birthday, and I've mentioned this in a previous podcast, um, is I like to do things that are a little childish because we all take this world way too seriously and I want to get us all out and do something dumb. So monster trucks, pro wrestling matches. Um, we did the trampoline park one year, like in years past, I've done all sorts of things. Uh, you know, like I like doing dumb kid shit. So with everything going on and funds being a little tight because I was in between jobs at, the, at that moment, um, decided to pick something that would be a little better. Now, mind you, this is right on the cusp of when the social distancing thing was starting to get real serious. Yeah. So everybody was kind of mining their own, their own P's and Q's and not really touching a whole lot of things, but also still kind of gathering. So I apologize if this seems concerning to anybody else. We were just as naive as anyone else at the time. Um, so I everybody that fuck it let's do a field trip let's all go to dc let's go to the museums so i uh, had a bunch of people agree online some people couldn't make it what have you but we got a large group of us together headed to uh the natural history museum was our first stop wandered around there had a super great time hanging out there mm -hmm. 
um, got a chance to see all sorts of stuff and being able to do museums with kids is always rad. <laughs> so Jamie uh, uh, and his wife and their daughter were there. Um, I had a buddy of mine who brought his son. His son's like, he's a giant 16. Yeah. Yeah. He's a yeah, there, giant. There are photos on my Facebook page. <laughs> right. Yeah. When, right. But the thing is when I first met my buddy, Keith, his son was not born yet. Like, <laughs> right. Cause like, you know, they, they had, uh, we had met working at Kmart literally yeah. like he had picked up a job just to get a discount and make a little extra scratch while his wife was pregnant. And we ended up clicking immediately nice. and have been friends ever since. But like I helped them, you know, move out of their, their, uh, their old house into their new one. And I remember him in a high chair and him <laughs> being super young. There are photos on my feet of him celebrating a birthday with us years ago uh, when he was like, I don't know, seven or eight, maybe. And mm. he's, he's wee. he's like, you know, barely mid mid stomach or whatever it is. And then he had a growth spurt and he's a goddamn giant. Yeah. 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 He's huge. It's crazy it, to me. His head was touching like some dinosaur bones in that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. So and it's, but it's always great to me seeing him because I, I always remember him as sweet little kids. So when I see him, it's one of those things like, Jesus, you tall drink of water. What are you doing? Stop it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just a goddamn dinosaur. Um, so, um, yeah, most, so, and then well, yeah. most, most of the museum is free. Like you, you go down yes. to the museum, everything is free except in the natural history museum, they have, um, a butterfly exhibit, um, yes. that you have to pay to get into. And I've been before, have you ever been to the, the butterfly thing before? No, I had never been to the butterfly thing before. Honestly, it had been, uh, eight years maybe since I've been in the natural history museum. Like when I had done my DC trips, it was always so crowded that I had always just skipped it. Yeah. So it was one of those things where I hadn't been in forever. So the whole walking through was, was like a whole new experience for me. The place is gorgeous. Oh yeah. And they've upgraded yeah. a lot of the exhibits. Um, yes. <laughs> did you get any butterflies to land on you? <laughs> Um, yeah, we, we got a couple to land on us. Um, Nicole took my camera and just kind of sort of wandering around, just kind of spending the day snapping photos. She got a ton of butterfly photos. She still needs to edit like all of that stuff. Yeah. But it it was really, it was very, very pretty. It warm as hell to no oh, yeah. surprise, but oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they got to keep them but all cozy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, little, little, little butter friends got to stay cozy. Uh, do you have a highlight from the natural history, like a, a place that, or an exhibit that people must see? Um, for me, it's um, when you go through the mammal area, there's a, like a grizzly bear, like a Kodiak or something like that, standing on its hind legs up on top of a platform and you get a chance to kind of stare up at it. And it's the only <laughs> time in your world you get a chance to stare down a grizzly bear on its hind legs. <laughs> And I highly recommend that everybody do that. Like, yeah, just kind of stand. I don't like, don't like make a thing of it, but like saunter up to the thing. <laughs> like, you know, you're going to punch this dude in the face <laughs> and then look up at him, stand your ground and stare at him and ask yourself the question. Can I knock this motherfucker out? Like just hold stop. Can I knock this motherfucker out? And if you manage to kind of go, yeah, you know what? Fuck that fuzzy asshole. Put him in the next week. Big stupid feet. Like, <laughs> totally. You're going to feel great the rest of the day. Just because you're going to walk around with that. I knock out a, a fucking bear energy. And that's a whole experience. Yeah. <laughs> Big bear energy. <laughs> BBE. Yeah, that, that big bear energy. Like, yeah. Yeah. Cause like you can, you can walk around and you can see all the other cool, like uh, taxidermy animals and what have you. And the, all of the, the setups are really beautiful. And I love the dinosaur bones. I'm a super big dinosaur fan, Yeah. but for personal experience of one of those things, like full, like, <laughs> uh, God, it's not, I'm trying to remember what the movie is with Brad Pitt and it was a good death, but anyway, um, <laughs> But yeah, you need to stare down a bear. It's so, the only time you'll ever get a chance to really do it. 
you should totally do it. So you don't get that same sensation when you're staring down a T-Rex skeleton. No, no, because it's because it's a skeleton. Like, there's there's one of those things where you don't actually know what it looked like. Like we have our best ability to have an understanding of what it looked like, but yeah. You know, it, this isn't staring down the the animatronic monster from Jurassic Park. Uh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is you staying staring down a bunch of bones, and it's beautiful and super interesting. And like, big fuck you money goal would be dinosaur skull. Like, don't get me wrong, <laughs> I I want uh, I want that, but no, it's it's not the same to me. There's not that same level of intimidation because I don't have that genuine fear that they could be here at any point Mm. um weird conversation that pivoted through that though one of uh nicole's friends owen was obsessed with the idea of getting mammoths because he was (laughs) he read read like this article which i i read as well was basically like oh yeah we're like 10 years away from getting from being able to birth mammoths based on cloning technology and, and, you know, genetic modification mm-hmm. of existing elephants and what have you. And he's just like literally wandering through the thing, passing out with the exhibit, going, like saying this, but saying it to the point where he's a little loud about it. So like <laughs> people who are easily like eight or 10 <laughs> steps behind us are literally hearing him go. So I don't know that we can have fucking mammoths. I don't know what the fuck we're all waiting on, but like I could use a mammoth. That's all I'm saying. Like, <laughs> and I'm losing my shit, losing my shit. <laughs> <laughs> like you like you all are kind of like we were walking ahead because i think you all are, were like heading over to like video exhibits that hazel was into yeah and he and i are just wandering through and i am falling over because he's just like <laughs> no i mean seriously what's what's the hold up like what are we afraid of mammoths like what yeah yeah are elephants not dangerous enough we give them fur coats and suddenly we're all terrified <laughs> and it's like you know, it's got a point. Uh, he just he makes a like, good argument. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, so it's like, on the you know, I'm sure. They, yeah. Like I'm sure there's a zoo in Alaska and I'm sure they could use a mammoth. Like it's not a, <laughs> it's not an unfair thing. Like there are cold weather zoos. That's all I'm saying. Like, Oh man. And that's a lot of meat. That's a lot of mammoth meat. Wow. I like that. You <laughs> suddenly went immediately to, Wait, we can just make more of these. We can eat mammoth, right? Like, <laughs> never it occurred to you when you're at the Baltimore Zoo watching elephants eat pumpkins. You're like, that's a lot of fucking steak right there. Yeah, that's, but that's different. That's different. We didn't no, genetically engineer no, the elephant. We're we are making we are making mammoths. Mammoths are gone. We are <laughs> we are bringing them into the world. That is that is different. Elephants are still here. They're bringing each other into the world. But when we do it, we can do whatever the fuck we want, Wait, them, including so that, eating them. So what you're saying is, is that you have no moral obligation to us bringing back dodos for a Popeye's menu item. No, I don't because I'm a cruel. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm fine with this logic. I'm just making sure that everyone else understands the thought process because, here. Because at that point, it's a fake animal. Like if we are, if we are constructing <laughs> no, I mean, it, if we are constructing genuinely. it out of whole cloth, like using technology, it is a fake animal. <laughs> Dolly, Dolly is different. Dolly, that the, the sheep, the clone sheep. No, 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 it's not. Okay. Then Dolly is a fake animal and we should eat her. <laughs> <laughs> I like how quickly you caved on your morals. The second I even half called you on that. You immediately were like, yeah, morals, fuck them. Who cares? No. Yeah. I, I love that. I ain't that stopping is the scientist in you. Yeah. That is absolutely the scientist in you. Just not about, not about shoulda, but all about coulda. Like, <laughs> well, I mean, we made the thing. What's it going to do? Die of natural causes. <laughs> like I can have King rack right the fuck now. So let's carve this thing up. Yeah. Like, yeah. Can I get somebody with a straight razor to let this thing's neck out? And we ha- like, we can have uh, shanks in like 20 minutes. Easy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if, if you can, if we get to the point where we could just clone steaks, I'm eating a cloned steak. I'm eating okay. a clone steak. So, so are we talking about cloning cows? Or are we talking about just like lab just, created? Just meat? a meat. Just a okay. meat. Just, just slabs of meat. Slabs of meat at that point. All right. Fair because enough. I'm, I'm good behind this. That's what I figure. By the time we can get, by, by the time we can pump out a mammoth, we could probably just get a mammoth meat clone, like a mammoth steak. So 
if you want to appease the people who are be like mammoth rights, then you don't kill the new mammoth that you just made. <laughs> but you take the, the you clone the mammoth meat because at that point we'll just be cloning steak. So you clone a mammoth steak and I then you have think, a mammoth. That how, goes <laughs> how do you? How does it grow? How how does it grow? How does the steak grow? No. I understand how steak grows. It grows inside of a cow. Right. I'm asking, how do you grow a steak outside of a cow? Well, by the time we can pump out a mammoth, we will have the technology to grow a steak no, outside of a cow. No, because we were told like six years ago that in 10 years, we're four years from mammoth, man. Like it's... <laughs> Will you, will you we're on the precipice of mammoth. We are approaching at Mount Mammoth. <laughs> well, isn't it like... Aren't the KFC chickens not real chickens at this point? They're just like no, they're yeah. still chickens. Oh, they are still chickens. Yeah, they're 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 still living creatures. Mm. They're just very sad versions of living creatures. Mm. Like, I'm trying to think. There's got to be a way to to just grow a steak, and if you can grow a steak, then you can grow a mammoth steak. <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be a way. Oh man! Some someone with a someone with a neural net or a positronic matrix can figure set it to work on how do I make a <laughs> steak outside of an animal? Like, like the impossible meat is pretty close from what I understand. My brother, my brother says it's great. It's greasy. It's all that kind of stuff. I don't okay. know because the only impossible thing I've ever eaten was the impossible Whopper. And friends, you do not go to Burger King because it tastes like meat. You go to Burger King because you're fucking hungry and it's on the way home from a convention and it's convenient and it's still open. Yeah. Yeah. Um, speaking of food, <laughs> after, after Natural History, we went to, uh, what is that barbecue place called? Hill Country Barbecue. Hill Country Barbecue Country. Hill, Hill Country Barbecue. Now, Brendan and I have been going to Awesome Con forever and a day. And it's right down the street from this barbecue joint. Yes. And we usually go because they can fit a whole bunch of motherfuckers in there at the same time. Yeah. However, by the time we get there, they're out of everything. <laughs> except, and this is the secret that I've learned, except the sausage. There's always sausage left over. And that has become one of my favorite things there. Because they do a cheddar jalapeno sausage and it's a goddamn 20. Oh, yeah. I mean, the sausage is great. But I've, I've seen other things on their menu. Yeah. And I've wanted to try them. <laughs> I've wanted to try them. So Jamie finally got himself some moist brisket. The brisket. I love, the, I love the brisket. It was so good. And then um, somebody said something about pork belly, and I totally missed it on the menu. So we have yeah, to go back. I, I know. I know. We're going to have to go back. Honestly, like that's one of my favorite barbecue joints just because it's super good. I, I would love to be able to see the one thing that I miss being able to do was that when we would go for conventions, I wasn't driving. So we could go there. I could have a couple margaritas, yeah. get, you know, get a nice buzz going, eat way too much barbecue, and then wander <laughs> back to the hotel and be like, this is a good day. <laughs> good day. Like, and I, I don't have DC hotel money. Like, we yeah. live a stone store from DC. Why would I do that? And nobody wants to be drunk on the Metro. That's true. Um, well, if... If this if if this book goes well and Khan start inviting me to places, yeah, Brandon yeah. Summers, I'm gonna need yeah. some, I'm gonna need some help. I'm gonna We're need back, some help. Baby. I'm I'm gonna need some help. So people buy this goddamn book when it comes out. <laughs> yes, please, <laughs> please, because yeah, I I like going to we cons. need barbecue money. Yeah, we, we need barbecue money. Yeah, like Brandon Chalmers. <laughs> if, in if the I worst kind go, of way. Yeah, yeah. If I get to go, you get to go. And if we're Hell going, yeah. we're eating. Hell yeah. We're eating. All about that barbecue life. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yes. And they have desserts there too. And mm. like they got mm. booze. I don't drink, but apparently the booze is pretty good. The booze is pretty tasty, honestly. It's consistently good. And yeah, we've been a couple times and every year. Their house margarita is super good. Like nice. just... Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, the other nice thing. If you were a nerd and you were going for a convention in the DC area, every person gets a separate check. 
Uh, no yes. more fucking around yes. with this big group table bullshit. Yes. So please do yourself a favor. Go get barbecue. Oh, yeah. Go enjoy yourself. Oh, yeah. You pay just like any deli. You order by the weight. So get what you want. Pay what you want. Move on. You get somebody who doesn't necessarily want as much. Cool. They, don't, they only have to order exactly what they want. It's also not the sort of thing where you have to order off of a big menu where you're like, well, I kind of want this, but I kind of don't want this. And then you end yeah. up settling yeah. and you're paying DC prices for things that you don't actually get what you want. You want to just show up, get a thing of baked beans and get shit faced. You can do that. You can literally <laughs> just go in there, order a cup of baked beans, order two margaritas <laughs> and sit at the table and comfortably eat your beans and drink your Rita's. Like there's nothing wrong with that. It's the beans and Rita's yeah, Rita, all day beans long. And yeah, Rita, like, beans and yeah. Rita. I'm not judging. Enjoy yourself right afterwards. There's cobbler. You should go get cobbler at the very least. I should have gone for the cobbler. I got the apple crisp thing and it was yeah. a little, it was, it was, eh. it was, yeah. it was, eh. but I mean, it was good. It was good. If, if I wasn't full of brisket, I, I might've had a different opinion. <laughs> See, I, I've done cobbler there before, but also I was pretty drunk when I did it. So it was always like, I was pretty drunk and then I had way too much meat and I was like, fuck it. I've had a good day. I'm getting some cobbler. I'm motherfucking peach cobbler. Hell yeah. Some peach motherfucking cobbler. I'm yeah, going to mode that cobbler. And just, I end up coming back, big scoop of ice cream, big fucking bowl of cobbler. I'm just like, Yep. Uh, you know what I got myself? Deconstructed pie. Because that's what cobbler is. It's just lazy pie. <laughs> it it's is. Like, it it's is. like the pie version. It's like lasagna was pie. Yeah. It just, yeah. Man. Oh, God. I want to go back. <laughs> Fuck. I, I, I love food. You love food. I am petrified that this is going to devastate the restaurant industry. Well, that's why when we're all right side up, we just <clears> got to start going to places again yeah i think i think so and then like promote them and shit and tell other people to go because like yeah i mean <clears throat> yeah and especially jesus christ especially asian restaurants yeah i yeah yeah i am going to be like, i'm going to be 24 7 at all of the asian food kitchens when that yeah. shit was 100 percent. yeah i'm doing the same thing it's just like yeah i'm supporting them as best i can like yeah God damn it. I'm yeah, no, it's all good. Um, anyway, so after we got done lunch, um, the charm city Shinobi, uh, his wife, <clears throat> Allison and their son, miles, who I fucking adore, um, all joined us for barbecue and then joined us in the second half of our journey where we went to somewhere. Where I don't know if a lot of people have been to, I know you and I have the national portrait gallery. Oh yeah. Um, which is one of my favorite music. Like I have weird enjoyment of the music. Like for me, the American history museum and the portrait gallery are like my favorite places. Portrait gallery is like a sleeper. Like people it, pass by it all the time. And right. Yeah. So, um, but I like it for two very distinct things. One, the modern art area. Oh yeah. That's a lot beautiful. of fun. Yeah. And uh, I was scrolling through the photos and Nicole took, there's a really great one of Hazel standing in front of, they've got a whole neon United States set up. And behind that neon United States are TVs that are showing footage representative of each state. Yeah. And it's a really wild mm. looking exhibit and it casts this beautiful light. And like, if you ever want to do uh, portrait photography of anybody, it's a great spot to go to because the lighting's great. And like the entire venue is really beautiful that way. Cause like the monitor area is very clean and stark and designed to be a certain way. And then like one part of it is very old school museum. Me like the, uh, the presidential gallery feels very much like a museum. And then the rest of it, like the old portrait style thing, it's very art deco. Like yeah. the whole place, ironically enough, I found out the place uh, mm. when I looked at it, majority of it was built in the sixties. Used to be the U S patent office. That doesn't but, surprise me. Right. But, um, the whole area of it looks like all the architecture and interior stuff was all designed like it's the thirties and forties. So it's a lot of brass and marble and very intricate and ornate stuff. And kind of deco. Very beautifully done. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's very, very beautifully done. What do you so, got? So I have a shot of a uh, Hazel yes. that I took on my cell phone of her standing in front of that. Yes. And like, she was there for like a good five or 10 minutes. So other people were taking this shot. <laughs> we had to peel her away from that exhibit. Like yeah. it was wild to see. Yeah. 
it, it really kind of felt like almost like a weird, like if you took a step back and you just stared at her, I would totally expect some poltergeist shit where she just looked back and be like, they're here. It's like, <laughs> no, 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 no. Hello, no, father. Brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I am your daughter. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so that place is super rad, and uh, and then went down to the um, the Hall of Presidents that's there. And I'd that never been setup. there. I'd never really. Been there. I'd never been through the Hall of Presidents. So like, okay, I'd never seen the Obama portrait. Oh, it's beautiful in person. <sighs> it's it glows like you. Yeah, the, the way they lit it, it makes it look like there's like a it's an LED panel and it's so bright. It's just paint and it's just right. light. It, but it creates this beautiful mm. setup of layering and everything. Like no photos don't do it justice. You yeah. absolutely have to see it in person. And that's, and that's why I didn't take a photo. Cause like there's a, there's a roped off line and people were lined up and then, you know, posing in front of it and doing their thing. Yeah. And I just took Hazel with me and we just kind of stared at it for stared a moment. Stared at it. Too. Yeah. And it was that, just, that's why I, I didn't even walk up. I just stood back and just stared at it. Cause it's like, yeah. Yeah, no, no amount of photos for me are going to change my my intake of that. Like there are so many, especially now, like listening to that podcast that I've been doing of uh, experiencing the presidents, having a better understanding of these guys, being able to look at some of the photos and bust the death the death mask of uh, of Lincoln. Oh yeah, that was amazing. Um, they they unfortunately have a uh, marble bust of Andrew Jackson that yeah. is not bolted down at all. So yeah. if you accidentally do a spin kick and knock it down <laughs> and it shatters. <laughs> oh, well. It was tempting. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if you heard this, but as we were going through the Hall of Presidents, Hazel asked, um, she asked me, like, can girls be presidents? And I was like, fuck. <laughs> That yes. that made that almost made me cry. I said, "Yes, they absolutely can." We are, yeah, we are too fucking stupid, and it hasn't happened yet. But yes, yes, you can. Yeah, the, this there's something similar to that when you go to the American History Museum. There's a podium that has the seal of the president on it, and there's literally like a video feed that goes along with it. And essentially, you can show yourself being president, giving a speech. And, uh, I, I was going to walk up and have somebody take a photo of it. And I saw two little girls walking behind me and they like, I immediately was like, no, 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 go on. And I just stood there and it was just like, <laughs> I don't need to be up there. Yeah. You need to be there. You need just to be like, up there. You're good. Experience this. Remember this feeling. You should go and do this again. Yeah. For real. Yeah. Like get after it. But yeah, I, I definitely heard Hazel say that. And there was a very bittersweet moment of just like, yeah, yeah, they can. <laughs> like, they absolutely can. Never mind that it took them way longer to get the vote than anyone else. But whatever, it's fine. It's fine. Um, yeah. No big, no big deal. Yeah, I'm going to, it's, it's going to be uh, interesting when Hazel gets to American history because I will not be able to hide my sarcasm. <laughs> I don't think you should. I think a bit of honesty when it comes to that sort of thing, because we really, as a society, like to hide some of that stuff. And I think yeah. having a very clean understanding of it makes you better educated about the sort of thing. Like, yeah, you know, you can do the Yankee Doodle Dandy stuff and everything else like that. And it's an important thing to go to Fort McHenry and learn about the war and all that other stuff. But also at the same time, it's important to understand the things that we got wrong and oh, yeah. continue to get it wrong. <laughs> and we don't hide these things. Yeah. And yeah. Boy, do we continue to get shit yeah. wrong. Yeah. Hooray. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so we ended up uh, going into there and then the last stop in there is a hidden little gem, which is their atrium. So oh yeah. Have oh, it's fantastic. Center of the building hmm. um, is used to be like a big open garden, essentially for the employees to be able to have lunch, where they wouldn't have to wander around DC or anything else like that and go to the National Mall. They could have this beautiful open area, uh, garden area where they could hang out and put blankets down and be able to enjoy a bit of sun. So this way, they weren't buried at their desk all day long. What a really nice feature. Um, in the 90s, to my understanding, that got changed. They changed the flooring. They had the botanical garden come in and do uh, a bunch of uh, flowers and stuff like that that are there. And then they built this beautiful roof that has 
this like curvature to it yeah. and it's all glass and it is stunning to see. And in the it's summer, beautiful. they also have flo- uh, fountains that come up from the floor oh, yeah. and add a bit of water going through that you can kind of like take your shoes off and get your feet wet and just kind of yeah. wander around. It's a beautiful, beautiful it's area. Gorgeous. So we, gorgeous. Yeah. We hung out there with the kids and just kind of let them unwind for a bit because staring at faces of people, they were super good about it. Like Miles was super good the whole time. Hazel was yeah. really great the whole time. Like, <laughs> yeah. We were very lucky to have both of them be able to enjoy that whole process and be good sports about everything and yeah. do things that weren't necessarily for kids, especially that second half. So I really appreciated them being real chill about everything. And I, I think it's, I think that open area is great because you don't necessarily think of the mu- like the portrait gallery as like a family friendly place. So right. To have that where they could just unwind and kind of like shake it off and stuff. I think it's yeah. great. Yeah, that that was super good and getting a chance to see all of that and spend time with them and it was a uh, it was a really nice way to end the day. Um at least at least for me. So I got I got barbecue, I got friends, I got a chance <laughs> to see some of my favorite exhibits and got a chance to hang out with the kids and that was really Oh, so good. And I yeah, the the portrait gallery is definitely one of the hidden gems in that Chinatown area. Cause like, you know, there's a lot of fun restaurants, um, a lot of good eats. There's the stadium that's right next to it. So like, and the portrait gallery, even though it's gigantic, people just kind of ignore it. Cause yeah, it just you ignore blends it. into the background. Yeah. And that, that's the thing too. It's also like a stone's throw from the barbecue place. It's like what, um, two streets over something like that. Yeah. A block or two. Up. One. Yeah. yeah. Like it's, it's nothing. So if you manage to make it to the end of the national mall, go down and go get barbecue. It's right there. It's yeah. also open later than most of the other uh, museums. I think it's open until like seven. Yeah. So you could technically like most of the museums close at like five thirty when they're, when they're open or, or like five, you could hit those, literally be done at like three something, go for an early dinner. So this way, you know, you actually get barbecue and then go hit the portrait gallery and be able to, and the, the museum's huge. So mm. you can kind of slowly walk through everything, walk through, digest a bit and be able to kind of enjoy a lot of really pretty stuff. So yeah, that's one of my, one of my favorite hidden gems in DC. And yeah. there's a better than average chance that even if you're a local um, to the area, you know, Maryland, Virginia, what have you probably haven't been, you probably should go. Yeah. And especially when, uh, when things open back up, not yeah. don't, don't go when president Trump tells you to go. Cause that motherfucker doesn't know what he's talking about. Go when it's okay to go and be in groups of people. Yeah. Um, I have a feeling they're not going to open until it's okay. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. That, that's the funny thing about like, I want to open the economy. I was like, motherfucker, the NBA closed themselves. <laughs> Waffle house closed themselves. Well, We'll, you didn't we'll, close shit. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll figure all that out <laughs> on the back end. Jamie Gucci, I have a question though. Yes. So, necessity is the mother of all invention. Yes. And we find ourselves in a very difficult time when it comes to toilet paper. Oh shit. Yeah. So I asked the question because there's only really, to my knowledge, been one movie, one movie, <laughs> who has tackled. The conversation about what happens when there isn't any toilet paper. Walking Dead, 10 seasons. Nobody talks about shitting in the woods. It's Nobody. True. Nobody it's says true. a fucking word. No one says a word. <laughs> oh, God. Down goes Jamie's microphone. No, Down nobody goes says the mic. a word. Yeah. Zombie apocalypse, Carl's dead. Just all sorts of shit. Spoiler alert, I know. I'm sorry. He got stabbed in the eye and then went out like a fucking champ. He's good oh, my dude. God. Um, mm, mm. We still watch that show, but God damn it. <laughs> I know. I do the same thing. Um, but yeah, like nobody complains about it. What's the one movie that covers what's going on and, and really handles not only that but also covers a bit of the social distancing thing because it doesn't encourage human physical contact is it mall rats no no what is no it? no 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 no. that's just a way to soak up shit um <laughs> it's fine <laughs> it is the 1990s action classic starring sylvester stallone and wesley snipes it is demolition, demolition. man oh yes the seashells 
the three seashells. seashells. If anybody seashells. doesn't know what the fuck is, is happening <laughs> in the sound of my voice, take a pause for the cause, hop on YouTube and type in Demolition Man 3 Seashells. So the premise of this whole movie to the best of my understanding, hang on, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it up and make sure that I get it right. But oh, I the, I got it because we we recently watched it like two years ago because they, there was like the thir- the thirtieth anniversary of the movie, and at San Diego Comic Con they they did a pop up future Taco Bell where they had everything yes. set up like future yeah, yeah yeah and in the bathroom there were the three seashells um, yeah so the the future is um the cops are like there it's it's like a liberal's paradise they don't have actual guns yes. everything is everything is nice and and cheerful society's clean everything is super clean uh there's no such thing as toilet paper every bathroom has these three seashells yes and uh the the only restaurant to survive the franchise wars was taco bell so when you go to a I, no- fancy restaurant it's always taco bell <laughs> I, I, I want to sidebar this real quick because genuinely I would watch DVR, pay for DVR service, just a DVR, a series on the franchise wars. Because I want to know, is that a bloody war? Is it a tech war? Is it a financial war? Is it buyout after buyout? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, are, are we talking like- How dirty does this, it get? Right, yeah, like, is this the Leo, Leonardo DiCaprio thriller, or this is like some sort of Gerard Butler, like, the Olympus has fallen sort of shit, <laughs> where, <laughs> yeah. This is Taco Bell! <laughs> right, yeah. Just, right, yeah, with him and the Scottish accent, and suddenly, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. the last line before he blows up McDonald's, like, you'll get our Taco Bell, and then just <laughs> fires off a rocket into a fucking, like, the golden arches, and yeah. the last thing you see is, like, the Burger King just openly weeping, shaking his fists at the sky as his, current, as his <laughs> kingdom falls. Like, I'm, I'm here for all of this. I don't know how you get the copyright to it. Yeah, I yeah. assume you just use one-offs. Like, you get, like, the Yum! brands to sign off on it so that we get Taco Bell and we get all of their subsidiaries and then the rest of them. We just loosely talk about, like, <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't know what we call it. But some sort of McDonald's equivalent, some sort of Wendy's equivalent or something like that, where they use like a ginger boy instead of Wendy's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like Williams or something. And Well, what you yeah. do is you, you set it up as a, as a YouTube channel and you just yes. do news reports. So it's like, today, blah, 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 blah. And it Whoa! stage it as news reports. Wow! That's wild. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. Yeah. And then you have like, you know, stock footage of, of like, we have so-and-so on the scene. And, and then like you have like on the, on the scene interviews and that's how you stage it. And that's wow. like, if I had fucking Holy money, shit. we would do that right now. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. God damn it. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. The franchise wars is like a, a hidden gem. Yeah. Anyway, like I was saying, necessity is the mother shows. of all invention. Yeah. So the bidet is an experience. Um, and there are bidet attachments, but there is something not so great in my head. And I know this is me being picky about this, about room temperature water <laughs> being shot. Warm water <laughs> feels soothing. This makes yeah, yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't keep my house the warmest in the winter. I can throw layers on. It's not a big deal. I like to keep the bill a little low. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> yeah. But that means that when the water that comes out of the faucet, when it's set to cold, it's fucking cold. Yeah. Um, so it begs the question, it's 4.30 in the morning. You get up, you have to use the restroom. Yes. You go, you finish, you turn that little dial, and all of a sudden, good morning, <laughs> you're just having just a, sh- uh, Yeah. <laughs> right. And then you have to play the game. Do I try and fall asleep after this? Because I, I don't know how you do it. I think, um, I think you get used to it. I have a friend in Italy and she, she's, she's been there for a while. So she looks at us like, what the fuck is wrong with you guys? We don't have this problem. Everyone has the right. days. So right. like, yeah, so no, for, I mean, I, I get it. I think, and I, know I think you get used to it. I think you just get used to it. I guess I, or, I think it's just one of the things where yeah or Brandon Chalmers on a whim we looked up Amazon to see if you could order the toilet paper online you cannot however 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 
you go to a convention center, you go to the bathroom, you sit in a stall. It has that giant Gunga Din motherfucking large roll in yeah. the unit. Yeah. You can absolutely order those online right now. Oh, okay. Right, right now. Uline has them. Amazon has them. Everywhere else has them because everyone's going for the little rolls. They don't realize yeah. that you can get the Gunga Din sized convention <laughs> sized. Yeah. And, and because it's you and not a convention full of nerds, that shit's going to last you a while. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, you're, you're going with some scratchy <laughs> assholes, but I guess, you know, any port in a storm, I get this. Four ply, yo. Four ply. Fair enough. Four ply. I, I, th- I think my, my question stems back to the Demolition Man question and the Mother okay. of All invention. Yeah, yeah. Why have we not figured out a better solution? Why have we not figured out the seashells? We've been shitting since the dawn of time. We've only figured out... <laughs> Two reasonable ways. Paper or hose. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Like a spray bottle or, or wadded paper. We haven't figured out another way to handle this. And I have to ask the question, why? Is it too taboo? Or is nobody, like, I have to believe somewhere huddled away in a shop is somebody like, a, a, a wannabe Adam Savage of Mythbusters who's <laughs> workshopping some shit. Like yeah. just yeah, 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 literally yeah, yeah. workshop. Like he's, he's going to take a look at that and he's going to go three seashells. That's fucking ridiculous. Hucks those out the window. Yeah. And him go, what you need are three rakes. And you're like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> so I think this needs, I think since all the, all the schools are out and all the colleges are doing remote learning, this needs to be someone's MIT thesis. Like what? where so, some, where is the some technology? Tech, yeah, and I think, I think that I think that might be one of the things that changes out of this is that some bored motherfucker genius at home is going to figure out why are we wasting money on toilet paper? Why are what? we mulching trees for this? We can figure out a better way. And if they don't come up with the seashells, it's going to be something simple and genius, and we're all going to be like, They're, how the fuck didn't we figure right, that out? Before? How didn't we think of that? What what's the deal? What's the setup? What's the yeah. simple thing to be able to handle this? What's, what's the way that we handle this questionable issue? Yeah. How do we handle it? Well, right off the bat, I think you take like one of those painter scrapers and you just scrape your ass. <laughs> I, I asked the question, Jamie, do you really want to get tools near your asshole? <laughs> right out of the gate. Like just, just going to ask that question right out the gate. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good question. That's why we need some like smart ass nerd to come up with a solution. I, I, yeah. I, I need some sort of nerd who can handle some sort of weird squeegee. Like, is it, is it like a squeegee sort of thing where we, we handle that and then we, we put the head inside of like a container thing. Like it almost looks like a toilet brush that's yeah. got one of those weird little domes over it. Cause we're all terrified of what's yeah. on the other end of the toilet brush yeah. until we unsheath and then use it to clean the toilet. Like do we stick it back in there and let the thing just disinfect itself and run like a quick cycle, like a dishwasher afterward or well, like what's the deal? Yeah. Well the, the, th- one of the theories that I see that I've seen about the seashells and it's not at all, it hasn't been verified because I don't think the writers actually figured it out. But one of the seashells you pick up and you actually use it to scrape your asshole clean. Yeah, I, okay, that's fine. But then what happens <laughs> when you get too much? <laughs> <laughs> or more importantly, what happens when you've had hot sauce and things are, are, are loose? Like... Yeah. How, how do we how do we handle the loose problem? Yeah, maybe it's like a maybe it's like a sponge type thing. I no, you don't want a sponge. You don't want a sponge. I'm telling you, man. I think it's got to be a squeegee. I think it has to be some sort. It's got to yeah. be some sort of boilable, disinfectable squeegee sort of thing. Like literally, like some sort of weird, like curvable kind of thing that's like soft rubber that comes to like a, a like soft point that you can yeah. kind of get in between there yeah, 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 and yeah. you can slide and then toss and it can, like there's literally like a little thing and you get like 10 or 12 of them or something like that. And it's a little dishwasher that like sits next to your goddamn toilet. Yeah. You just 
swipe and then throw it in there and then swipe the next one and throw it in there and then run the cycle. And then like 20 minutes later or whatever it is, yeah. you, the things are disinfected and clean and you're good. Or like an autoclave, like you get like a, like the container is an autoclave and it just yeah. like zaps it as it, you know, you stick it in and zaps it. Yeah. And you yep. have at, you have at least two because who knows what who's coming next door, you know? Right now, no, yeah, two absolutely, you, right? Yeah, but you have a couple kind of, like, of them. Yeah, 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 and and like you get a couple of them that are just sitting out, ready to be used, and then a couple of them that sit in the cycle, and you just are constantly rotating. And worst case, you're using electricity and water, which are still plentiful and capable at the moment. Right. So until that time comes, you're good. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. So, so, yeah, I I don't know. I, I hope just, someone figures it out. <laughs> somebody's got to figure this out. That's all I'm saying. Like, there's, I, there's been a run on bidets. Like people are getting there, bidets. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I, I need, I need lasers. I need someone outside the box. Boston dynamics needs to build an ass pipe. Maybe that's, yeah. <laughs> maybe that's it. And I know Get it's a robot, lot of trust. Robot dog to it's wipe it's your a ass. lot of trust to have two little <laughs> robot hands come out from under the, the lip of the toilet, just kind of come up and under and just kind of zwip, zwip. You know what? That, that's what it is, Jamie. You know how you handle this? Like screen printing. <laughs> it's a oh, little shit. robot that literally just swipes it clean one direction, swipes it clean the other direction. The bidet comes up, poses, and then just you're clean. Yeah. You're shiny. Really, that's what it is. We need car wash technology. Mm. Oh, the little things that go, <laughs> or the rolls yeah, that go. Well, I mean, I, I got to be honest with you. <laughs> having having a, a tiny slapping sort of sensation <laughs> on my asshole, probably not the greatest, but. Oh, it depends. I mean. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I'm, no, by all means, like, enjoy your kink. But, like, it just, <laughs> it's going to be, all I'm saying is potty training is going to be harder if we have to teach them <laughs> to just let the thing just kind of like yeah. rinse cycle your asshole and just so <laughs> and then just <laughs> and you hear the the air thing and like you got to get a nice seal on it because once the air dryer starts right or it, it's a vacuum <laughs> see at that point then we're just doing nasa technology how does nasa do it it's a vacuum. Is it just like an ass gasket? They shit it just, into just a vacuum. Sealed? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. Like, do we need to get, is there, is there a Flovey attachment <laughs> for my asshole? Is really what I'm asking. <laughs> it was able to cut my hair in the eighties. Can it handle my shit now? We so. just need the wettest <laughs> vac, the wettest vac and just let it handle <laughs> the problem for us. So if, if the mammoths come before the new wipe technology comes out, how disappointed are you going to be? I, oh, God damn it. You know what? No, yeah, I, I hope they do because they've been promising mammoths like 10 years ago. We're just out of toilet paper now. Like if we mm. suddenly ran out of mammoths, totally different story. Mammoth <laughs> technology through the roof. <laughs> Mammoth right sticks. now, we don't know what we're missing. We don't have a mammoth to miss a mammoth. You got to have the one, and then people are going to go, Jesus Christ, we're going to run out of mammoths. And then suddenly, <laughs> the technology is off to the races. Yeah. We're running out of toilet. We have to conserve cake and paper. Like, we've talked about this. So, yeah. we're going to have to figure out another technology. There has to be another way. I I hope someone's I'm, working I'm on looking it. at you, science. Yeah. Like, I... I, yeah, we don't, I don't know enough. <laughs> here's the thing. I genuinely don't expect science to be able to create any sort of cure for this virus anytime soon because that's how all of this stuff works. But we can sure as shit figure out a better way to make toilet paper. Yeah. Like we can solve this problem now. And the benefit of doing this is then you can shoot an amazing documentary about it and then you, you launch the device or technology, and then you and then you show the documentary, instant hit. You're making money hand over fist. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody's going to become a billionaire, changing the game on this. Right. And and big toilet paper isn't going to want it, so of course it's going to be amazing. Oh yeah. No, you're going to fight. You're going to fight the actual power that be. TP wars. Yeah. The TP yeah. wars. Yeah. I see you, Scott Tissue. <laughs> From your, <laughs> from your ironically ivory porcelain tower, looking down upon me, the little man, yeah. here to liberate the masses, because you can't seem to tear down trees fast enough. I'm one part savior, one part Lorax. Do you understand that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Fuck. here 
to save literally everyone's ass. Fuck you, Charmin Bears. We stared you down at the museum. You're going down. That's what I've been doing. I, Jamie, I've been preparing for a stare down <clears throat> with a bear. I'm not picky about what bear. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm not picky. I'm not picky about what bear. Yeah, those charming bears I just know can, can lick it. There, there. I know there's a better solution out there. I there know has there to is. be. Yeah. There has to be. There has to be. And meanwhile, everyone who has a bidet is like Jesus Christ. The answer is a fucking bidet. Would you settle down? <laughs> nay, nay. <laughs> We don't stop with technology that was created in the, I assume, 1800s. Yeah. Like, I don't know. <laughs> you don't want a butt hose. You want technology. Yeah. Yeah. I, yes. Yeah. Like, I don't. Things get better with time. We got to figure out a better way to do it. The bidet attachment, that's nice. That's not thinking outside the box. No, 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 no. Like, we, you know we, how the flamethrower was invented? I don't. Somebody looked at somebody else and went, I want to light that motherfucker on fire, but I want to do it from right here. And then <laughs> like, that's, that's and they the got idea. tired of throwing matches. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can't Molotov cocktail. Who has time to fill bottles anymore? Yeah. 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 It takes too long. I want to be able, yeah. I want to be able to throw fire at that guy and I don't have the time to build a trebuchet. <laughs> so I have to find, there has to be a better way. Yeah. Someone has to build me a backpack with a lighter on the front. Like, it's just, it's the only way. We need the flamethrower of toilet paper. We do. We absolutely do. Like, I don't know. Maybe the, maybe the secret is I need to be richer and I just have to hire somebody to just be like a Shabbos Goyam and just spray my ass down with a super soaker <laughs> after I'm done. I don't know. Like, the, the bidet doesn't feel like enough. Yeah. You're, we need some Tony Stark on this. I need some Tony Stark. Yeah. I, I, I need, I need some, some Jarvis. I need Jarvis to help me out with this. Can yeah. somebody fucking call vision? Cause I, I need to see, I need I to bet, see clearly. I bet Batman would have done it too. Cause he's fucking got a Bruce sh- Wayne. No, 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 got no, a no. Shit in no, suit. no, no. Bruce Wayne's been selling weapons, great tech to fucking everybody. He ain't interested in better than anybody. <laughs> he leaves that city shitty so that he can go play around in everything. He's got more than enough money to turn Gotham around. You have by actually point. running the city. He do so much more for the city as actually being mayor than being Batman, but he wants to run around like a fucking rich asshole. Yeah. Fuck Batman in that sense. Now, if he wanted to fix yeah. the city, he could. Yeah. Or or uh, Mr. Fantastic. Mr. Fantastic could figure this out. Reed Richards. Yeah. Reed Richards could figure this shit out. You would hate it because it would be smug as fuck. Yeah. But he would I mean, do but it. But then again, he doesn't really need to figure that out because in theory, he can stretch his ass cheeks wide enough that he would never have to wipe. <laughs> like my dog doesn't have to wipe. So like, I, yeah, yeah. Like I, I assume it's just an ass cheek problem is really what it is. Maybe, maybe that's it. Yeah, maybe maybe that's it. Maybe we just need to re-engineer the toilet seat. Maybe it just needs to spread, <laughs> and then we can just handle the problem. Maybe I've been approaching this all wrong. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's like a cone that goes right into the hole. Yeah, and then the yeah, poop I just comes out. yeah, yeah. Maybe I just need to center how I'm handling things. We just need to spread a bit. There's got to be like a like a, a a surface that. Like a non-friction surface, like a Teflon, like a like a like a super like Teflon. Teflon. No, no, you you were you were here, mm. non-stick coating. Yeah, so Teflon your asshole, and then yeah, you won't need to wipe because it all goes goes white way out right out. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, <clears throat> a lot of people have told me before you spray Pam in your asshole, you never have to wipe it again. <laughs> uh, I I haven't tested it at home, but you know, <laughs> we are far enough into this thing, and some science might happen. I don't know. <laughs> god damn it <laughs> oh man yep what a yeah. shit went in. <laughs> what a <laughs> shit went in yep that's you nailed it nailed it <laughs> all right brandon Shelmers, where can people find you <laughs> Uh, in my bathroom with the construction <laughs> cone trying to workshop this shit out. Um, you definitely won't find that on my Instagram handle at that guy Chalmers, which you find some really great dog content these days. Aww. So be sure to give me a follow. Jamie Noguchi, where can they find you? Uh, Jamie Noguchi on Instagram, wherever you're seeing this podcast, Angry Zen Master on Twitter, although it's very volatile now. I am not as livid online as I am in, in real life, but I'm retweeting a hell of a lot of angry people. So <laughs> maybe don't go there. 
Uh, oh, just avoid if, Twitter, kids. Especially yeah. Now. <laughs> and if you have conservative leanings, why are you following me? <laughs> why? Just why? <laughs> oh, man. All right. That's it. Yep. Stay safe. Bye, Stay kids. away from everyone. <laughs> yeah, please. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.